Good morning guys, welcome to another craft session uh, with Sue. Have you ever wondered when you see some of these painted stones on, on the internet or when you're out for a walk and you find one and you go wow that's amazing and you think I'd love to be able to do that. Well I'm one of those people because I my, my painting skills is not brilliant so I found a way that I can make painting on stones look amazing without painting and um, I'm sure other people have done this already but um, this is something that I found for myself and thought yeah this works really well so I have one stone here and um, this is a piece of broccoli <laughs> <laughs> so you could use that as a marker in the garden if you if you're growing um, growing things in the garden. So yeah, there's a piece of broccoli on a very nice lacquered shiny stone, and then um, there's a really tiny one because obviously pebbles come in all shapes and sizes, and um, there's a nice little owl. So, you know, large or small, you can do amazing, something amazing with rocks. And um, I just have a um, a bit on the back. Basically, it's just leading people to the website so that they can say that they found a stone and they can um, just let me know that they found it and they've either kept it or they've rehid it. So, uh, you know, that uh, brings part of the fun. Right, so what I do is I go to my local um, my local garden centre and I pick up these, um, I think they're Scottish river worn pebbles. Um, you can get quite a big bag full and they're all varying shapes and sizes and um, textures and basically you just get a whole bag and um, this flat ones is you know not so flat ones I mean this one's just like a broken pebble but it's paintable and it's not too expensive to buy the buy the river worn pebbles um, you're not gonna get perfection but who wants perfection when you're when you're trying to improve it by putting something else on it? So I have here in front of me if I can just pull him up and not knock you over. I have a tray with all of these lovely pebbles on. Now I don't know if you can actually see, but one side is shiny, the other side is dull. The reason that that side is shiny is because I've used a PVA bonding um, glue um, which you normally use for bonding walls, you know, on the walls before you paint them. Um, I found that works a little bit better than a school PVA glue um, to, to seal the rocks. So I've, uh, I've sealed all the back sides just so that um, we can make a start on doing doing the other side. So I'm just going to put some light on the subject so I can see at the back here. Because I'm going to be doing some more painting and I want to be able to make sure that I've actually covered, um, covered the rock itself. So what I've done is I've layered the tray with... Um, a bag purely because I don't want to ruin my tray underneath um, and that's you know just to protect it so I can just rip off the bag when I'm finished and job done so with just a an old art brush nothing exceptionally exciting and I'll just get the glue out Obviously, it's just a just a bonding glue. 
that PVA bonding glue. just put onto a little bit of cellophane and I'm going to start painting the tops of my rocks. Once I've done this I'll show you um, what the next step is while these are drying nicely. So make sure you get a good coating on these rocks. Don't, um, don't skimp. Make sure that you're joining where with the other side that you did um, the day before because normally it takes a good day for this to dry off completely so that it's manageable I found that um, doing the rocks this way I mean I have hand painted some of them but well Let's put it this way, I didn't like it too much, but, uh, so you just keep piling on the glue, as I said you've got to be particularly generous because with these rough river rocks some of them are a little bit holy and porous and what the glue does is it just levels out the surface slightly and um, just fills in those holes so that you've got a, a neater surface. Right, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna finish off these rocks and then I'll be back and then we will. Okay, so all of the pebbles are now covered with PVA glue. So I'm just gonna move them to one side. Um, Sorry about the motion sickness um, while they dry so I can show you the next stage. Alright, let's go. So basically the, the brush I've just popped into water just so that it doesn't dry out. So I'm going to need them again in a wee while. So, or you can just clean it. This one is reasonably done. So I'll take him out, pop him to one side. Alrighty, so for the next job, gonna need a little crafty brush which has got some nice water soakable um, bristles. Um, this is a um, a watercolour brush so that it will hold the water and make everything quite wet um, then going to need I've got a scalpel blade here which uh, like a craft knife blade so going to need one of those going to need a good pair of scissors which can cut quite cleanly and then you need your next item which is going to be the things that you're going to use to decorate the stones so I have a napkin with some butterflies on it have a napkin with some super words on there. Have you noticed that I'm actually pulling out really good, colourful, vibrant pictures? You know, napkins has got really nice colours on. There's your vegetables. And I must admit, this next one is one of my particular favourites. And then um, I've had this one um, on stones which I've put out already. And I've had a lady get in touch with me to say that the, um, the stone that she found, um, she's actually given to her um, elderly mother. So which is the poppy 
which I think is um, uh, really nice. So what we do then, um, let's start with the butterflies, is these are three ply tissues, uh, napkins. So with my scalpel blade, I will just get in between the layers if I can see them. Being a spectacle wearer, I find that a little bit difficult sometimes. So I've just taken off the first layer. Now I don't get rid of these, I keep these because you always need them as mucking up cloth, you know, um, cleaning up cloths. So there should be another, another layer here. Let's so say this could be the like the the fiddly bit. But it's there. You just gotta keep persevering. It is there. And um and as this I'm you know I'm doing this um Live, I don't have this one prepped. Yeah, watching the struggle. All right, so I've actually separated part of it. Nope. Okay. Ah, dropped it. All right. So let me separate the third ply. In a second, just take that off there. Fold up your excess. Pop to one side because you'll use him again for mopping up. So then you are left with your butterflies. Okay. So. I think on one of my stones, I'm going to do this one here because he's quite, this one's a bit big for the stones that I've actually decorated. Obviously, the bigger the stone, the bigger the um, picture that you can do. So I'm just gonna start off by rough cutting this one out. You know, Bearing in mind, I just don't want to tear it out and, and make a mess of the of the design because I'm going to be using these the rest of this napkin on other um, other craft projects. Um, so we'll just pop this to one side. So now I have the butterfly and you can do several things. You can cut real close to the butterfly, but you have what I call the solid line around the, the butterfly itself. You can just see just there, you've got the solid cut line around the shape of the butterfly. Now there is an alternative and um, it just makes it a little bit easier. So what I do is I just lay it onto my cutting board surface. I get a little bit of water and I get my brush and I just go around that and stick the butterfly on the edges to the cutting board. Going to the areas where I know I want to do my tidying trim. So the water actually sticks it to the chopping board. So what I do then is I just get my blade and I just pull, 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 pull away from the edge, just 
sprinkle in the the wet away from the body of the of the picture that you want to keep. Now what this does is it makes the edge all feathery and there's no solid defined cut line. It's just a feathery um, edge which will make it a little better for when you place it onto your stone. Let's move that out of the way a bit. So when it's laying down like this you can actually see how it's going to look when it's on your stone so you just want to just keep nibbling away until you're satisfied that you're you know you're happy with the the result of your trimming it is time consuming but I normally do this per rock um, once the rocks are dry uh, for time's sake. All that. You can, if you feel skilled enough, just to wet the inside, just to take out the excess in, in there. But then you have to be very careful that you don't compromise the whole the whole picture, including getting rid of the butterfly's antennae, which you don't want to do. So you do have to be patient and careful. So I think I'm happy with where it is right now. So then with my blade, I just go in, gently pick up the picture, and that is the picture ready to place on my stone. I'm just going to pop it here for a second, so it doesn't stick to the board again. So just as a refresher, let's get this one out of the way. You get your napkin, three ply, something with a strong colour. You separate your layers. I would um not go out and specifically buy a huge pile just go on the internet you'll you'll find that um you can buy packs of four um for this purpose um and then you'll be able to see you know um if if it's going to suit you and if it's something you're going to do a lot of in that particular design then you can buy more of that design so what I've done then, so there's layer one, layer two. So those two layers are coming off. Fold up your excess tissue. Oops, let's move, move him up there. And I'm not going to do the edges right now because um, I will explain that in a, in a wee while. So what I am going to do is cut out what I'm going to put on a stone next. So I'm going to pick up this aubergine. I think um, that's quite a nice, nice colour to go on a rock. See, you can use these stones with the vegetables on as um, markers for um, for your garden. So when you've got a vegetable patch, you know what seeds you've put in in your vegetable patch. Right, 
So you continue to do this for all your um, bobs and bits, like your puppies, your your words, because as I say, there's words I can cut out, there's bang, boom, oops. Um, so the more vibrant and bright the colours, the better result you get. Um, if you do it too light, because I mean you can get some very delicate pictures, you have to have something that's going to really make that picture pop in the colour of your stone, which is not always possible when you buy a bag of random river rock. So um, I'm going to stop it here, wait for the uh, one of the pebbles to dry so I can actually show you how I um, apply the actual picture and seal it onto the seal it onto the um, rock itself. Alrighty, so I'll be back in a moment. Okay guys, so the stone is um, nearly dry with the glue um, and I've cut out some more shapes ready to do some of the rocks. So um, we've got the, the butterfly here ready and we have our little glass of water. Because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place him where I would like him to sit. And then I'm going to use a little dip of water and what that does is it just actually sticks that butterfly to the glue and then it also helps you to mold the napkin to the rock I mean you are going to get some um, tiny bends, some little tiny air bubbles, but I wouldn't worry about those too much because you can actually smooth those out. So I'm just using water on the glue just to help stick it down. Butterfly all in his place where he's gonna sit, hopefully, quite tidy on the rock. So, what I generally do then is I just um, take a look at the rock, make sure I'm happy with the where it's all laying down, and then I will use my palm. And I'll just go in and squeeze some of the water out. So make sure you've got a towel or something to dry your hand. And just use my palm to roll. And the reason I say you dry in between is that you're just getting the water off so your hand is dry again. But that just helps to iron out any creases. and to help the napkin stick. I mean, obviously, you're gonna get a little bit sticky from the glue that you've just wet. And I mean, I am doing um, a little bit of this whilst there were some still streaks of dry glue, uh, wet glue on there, but. So basically what I've done is I've forced all the water out I've forced all the edges down and I've gotten rid of most of the tiny wrinkles that may be on there. So there we have our butterfly on our rock. What we need to do now though is just to allow that to dry um, completely. So um, this is going to be a job that I will pick up tomorrow um, because this has got to be, or later on today maybe, it depends on um, on time, because I do have to go to work today. So um, it depends on um, how quickly this dries as to um, whether or not I can do the next stage with you. So I'm just going to pop him to one side so he can dry. So basically when you find your little rock, 
I mean this one obviously is um, quite dry uh, painted at the same time as the butterfly rock so I'm going to decide what I want to put on this rock itself so just judging by his size mm, it looks a little bit big um, do you know I think that will look rather pretty on that rock so we go back to doing what we did before using a little bit of water paint it onto your chopping board or board whichever you use onto your cutting board wet all the edges and then with your scalpel blade just go around and take the excess away from the edge of your petals or your you know your subject just feather it you don't have to be precise and making it neat neat feathering it helps it blend in easier to on the rock itself sorry about the shadows it's just that it's very dull outside and um this is just my overhead crafting light. I mean, I can see perfectly, but obviously it's causing shadows for you. So I do apologise if um, you can't see there. Alrighty, so I'm quite happy with, uh, with the way the edge has gone. So now I just need to pick up, pick up the, um, the flower. Now I'm... Because the edges are already wet, I've got to be careful with my placement, so oh, just pour it. And another piece has just come off. But I wouldn't worry about pieces coming off. Okay, so starting in the middle again. Moving yourself outwards and smoothing down your flower. Now, because the glue is underneath and it's still quite, um, still quite ta uh, tacky, you can um, use the water to stick it down to the rock, and it will actually adhere to the rock because of the. The nature of the, the glue itself. I mean, you can do this with um, with PVA school glue or Mod Podge, um, but I just find I get better results with this uh, bonding glue for um, for what I want this for. Now. There's a few bits on there that I'm not particularly happy about and it's and it's become obvious around some of the edges that they're a little bit a little bit messy so all I'm gonna do then is just go around and pull off like I did on the cutting board bearing in mind you do need to get all your bits off and you do need to care be careful not to rip the whole of your picture just very gently pull off smooth out bits that I don't particularly like that much just making sure basically that I'm actually happy with the edges and some of them are looking a little bit bit too big too wrinkly As you pull the edges too, you also um, de-wrinkle some of the work that you've just done, so which is quite handy. Alrighty, so as before, I'm just going to put the water to one side, get my rock, using my palm, I'm just Okie dokie guys, so what I've done is off camera, 
I'm actually um, the same as putting on the uh, napkin. I do cut up pieces of paper. Now on this cut up pieces of paper is basically instructions on um, how to hide or keep or whatever but uh, and an email address so that, that some, somebody can give me a call and let me know you know that they found it and they've re, re hidden it or whatever um so what i've done then is i've pasted those on that's actually dried and i've done the first coat of varnish on those so now i need to turn these around to put the the final coat on the picture side which i'm going to do now so I'll just grab the bits and bobs a quick view of my garden in the process um, you need to do this outside in the fresh air where uh, there's plenty of ventilation so just to finish off then just use the spray lacquer stand up to do this and just spray a good distance making sure that you cover everything that all done so can you can see the pictures where they're all done so they're nice and shiny now let those dry for, for a day or so and then they'll be good to put out for folks to find I'm gonna squeeze that onto the surface with my palm Bear in mind not to allow the the this uh, the napkin to stick to your hand. Um, you can put a few fine tunes in there, but with using your fingers, you've got to be so careful that you don't pick it up on your finger and then lift the whole thing. So that's why a palm is good because a palm is um, a much softer surface. So there we have our poppy stuck on our rock. So what we will do is we will pop this one um, to dry and then we'll be back when these are dry and I'll show you the next stage. Okay guys, so we're back now and these have all had their uh, pictures put on. So I've got a nice little, um, nice little poppy there. Obviously you've seen the butterfly. I've got the wordage, so I've got a bit of a banger in there and a boom over here. So, so now these are ready for the next stage. They're still a bit, so the paper is still a little bit on the on the damp side, but um, we'll cure that presently. So what we're going to do then is we're going to use our our glue again with our With our rocks and starting in the middle brush out keep your brush it brush strokes light you don't want to um, ruin the paper that you've just put on there and just seal that onto your rock so put plenty of glue on Seal it onto your rock, so make sure you've covered all the bit where there's paper. You want to make sure that everything is covered that you've just put on. And that you're not tearing up the, pa the, um, the paper that you've put on there either. It's so easy to wrinkle everything up and it's it just starts peeling off. So ideally it is good to do it in between in between drying. So it's got to be completely dry if you don't want to have this peeling off. Um I make a lot of these so um That's not a problem for me, but if you're doing this for the first time, then obviously try not to. As I said, push hard with your brush. 
because you don't want to take off the paper that you've just put on so gently gently lots of glue cover up your picture and these are going to need to dry for a couple of days you want to make sure that every single drip of glue is dry no no mistakes on this one and then I will show you the next stage um, luckily for you you've only got to wait a few seconds whereas I've got to wait a couple of days before I can do the final stage so basically this is the way we go just going on painting over our pictures you don't have to do the whole rock it's just making sure the surface of your picture is completely covered in glue and then that way um, it's placing the a seal a very good seal on your rock with your picture and this does dry clear so um, you know don't be thinking oh my god it, you're not going to be able to see the picture the glue dries clear so you'll be able to see it through underneath So we've got a nice little, nice little owl here. So just making sure he's completely covered. That all the edges are sealed, all the bits of paper are sealed that's um, covering him out on this rock. And pop to dry. And here's our aubergine that we cut out earlier. So just give him a quick paste over, smooth out any lumpy glue, leave to dry. And our final poppy. Need a little tiny bit more glue. I'm not going to open up a whole, a whole um, batch of it. So I'm just going to put a little bit for it straight from the bottle. And there we have our finished our finished glued pieces. Now these are all going to have to go and dry, so I will come back when the next stage is ready to do. So I will see you in a few seconds, for me, as I said, a couple of days. As I said, this is a, a good cheat for people who are not very artistic but want to produce a really pretty, um, a really pretty stone to hide. Um, for people to find. Um, they can be used as garden markers, uh, memorial stones. Um, I've actually printed off pictures of people um, and pets and what have you and uh, just put them onto a stone so that they've got like a little memorial stone if a, you know, if a pet's passed away. Um, as I said, it's for people who are not really good at <laughs> drawing um, a little bit like this effort here. This was um, painted on with acrylic pens, uh, paint pens. So yeah, so that's my very poor effort at doing a <laughs> at doing a painted stone. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video on how to um, make some um, non-painted stones, and uh, come back and see us again sometime. Cheers, then. Bye bye.